names on our streets. Um, the holy name of Krishna is Abhinantam Namina Amina, non different from Krishna. Therefore, whenever we chant Krishna's names, we are greatly blessed. Krishna has many names, um, and all these names are invested with transcendental potency, nam nam, ashakti. Um, so this transcendental potency will connect us with Krishna. And when that connection with Krishna takes place in love, in pure service to him, then he will reveal himself. And that is uh, the greatest mercy. Because we are by nature pleasure seeking. We're always looking for some pleasure. Here, there, and different things give us pleasure. Oh yes. So many things give us pleasure. Uh, nice weather, uh, nice, nice people, nice food. So many sources of pleasure are there. But yet, there is nothing, there is no source of pleasure that can compare to Krishna. Uh, Krishna is the ultimate source of pleasure. He is not only the source of pleasure, he is the source of unlimited pleasure. There is no limit. All pleasure, no matter how good, it has its limit. Uh, and we try to stretch the limit. Uh, can we stretch the limit a bit? Can we? We try. Uh, but how much can one stretch? It's the limit. I think we've taken it to the limit. But in bhakti there is no limit. There's no question of a limit in service to Krishna. There is unlimited service that one can offer to Krishna. The embodiment of that unlimited service to Lord Krishna is Sri Madhavarani. She is the uh, she is the Ladini Shakti. Uh, she is therefore providing Krishna with pleasure. Uh, Krishna is certainly the reservoir of pleasure and is giving all of us pleasure. Uh, where do we find greater pleasure? But Radharani is giving Krishna pleasure. Uh, so that is, a, is even greater. And there is greater satisfaction in that. Uh, therefore, um, the movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Sankirtan movement, the movement which is dedicated to glorifying Krishna congregationally, is particularly in the mood of Radha Dasya. Um, we might say we are Krishna Das, servants of Krishna. Yes, we are. But how are we servants of Krishna? We are servants of Krishna through Radha Dasya to serving Sri Mata Radharani. Because who can serve Krishna better? What service can we render for Krishna's pleasure? Something. We can cook something, but she cooks better. So what do you do? Be in competition. No chance. No chance. She cooks better. Uh, therefore, we assist. All right, let her cook. No, no, I don't want to cook. She must cook. Uh, she must cook. Rohini, in the early morning, Balaram's mother, she starts some cooking, right? Something, yes. But she's only waiting for Radharani to come and start the real cooking. Yeah, yeah. So Radharani already starts something. Cook some crabs, you know, just to warm up the kitchen, so to speak. You know what I mean? <laughs> After all, uh, yes, they they were using cow dung and wood for cooking, right? So you know, it's it's uh, get the fire going. Uh, 
start up the fire and sort of um, in this way. Um, and Sri Mata Radharani, um, it is said, she had this benediction from uh, from Dervasa Muni, who's easily angered and easily pleased. And then she got the benediction to, um, to cook. And the way she cooked, it was, uh, everything she cooked was just nectar. And it would extend a person's life and protect him also from all danger. So therefore, Mother Yasoda insists that she has to cook. <laughs> Come on, extends his life. That's what we want. And protects him from all danger. That's what it would taste like nectar as well. Well, she's the cook, you know, and for sure. <laughs> Where do you find such a cook? Yeah. Nectar extends life. Usually, all the tasty things, you know, they're bad for your health, right? Watch your heart, watch your this, watch your pleasure. And as soon as it gets like, healthy, then, you know, it's okay. <laughs> it tastes nice, but, you know, but Radharani tastes like nature, extends the life. Um, then, she never cooks the same. She says, today I'll cook your favorite preparation. Oh, my favorite preparation. Toast and beans. <laughs> if you're British, huh? um, I'm not British, so don't serve me toast and beans. <laughs> but all right, toast and beans. Uh, yes, I'm looking forward to my favorite preparation. But with Radharani, she, she never cooks the same thing twice. So how's that going to work? No problem at all. She cooks it, and as you're tasting it, it is your favorite preparation. You never knew that it was. You just found out, this is my favorite preparation. And tomorrow, you have your favorite preparation again. It's like this. It's always your favorite preparation. It's just a new favorite that you never knew. Wow, this is my favorite. I thought, that was your favorite? No, that was my favorite also. <laughs> Actually, it was all my favorite. So, how amazing, uh, how amazing is the nature of pure, unadulterated love. Because pure, unadul unadulterated love is empowering. It is empowering. It is material qualities which are the opposite of pure love, uh, such as anger, such as lust, such as greed, such as envy, madness, illusion. These qualities are diminishing us. They diminish us in our in our capacity, in our appearance, in intelligence, in, in compassion, they diminish us. The more we engage in these things, the more we shrink, uh, the more we become smaller and, 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 and more and more insignificant, until the human form of life is no longer possible. Until our consciousness has become like impossible to contain in a human form, and then it to sink down into lower species of life, into animal species of life. And there, in animal species, ah, you know, in the human form of life, you have responsibility. Ah. Oh yes, because if you do not act according to the principles of Dharma, you will get reactions. There is karma. For the animals, no. They can do anything. They can do anything. No reaction. But they get the reactions from previous life. That they get. So it's not all perfect animal life.
So I say, oh, I'm not signed for that, no karma. No, yeah. no. but karma from previous life. This animal life is predominated by fear. Human life is predominated by passion, by lust. And the life of the devatas is predominated by service to God. That's the nature of all these forms of existence. So, Daivi is a good mai, mama mai, and Rajaya, mama evi, papayate, mayamit, and tarantite. Krishna says um, that I can deliver you from the material energy. Um, we can again reconnect with the divine aspect of material nature. Daiviesa, actually Mama Maya, my illusory energy is also Daivi in its, or in its origin. There's no such thing that there is Krishna and Maya. It's not that there are two things. On the one hand, there is Maya and the illusory energy. On the other side, there is Krishna and you have to choose for Krishna. No, Maya is also part of Krishna. Yoga Maya, Samadhi, it is Mama Maya. Uh, it is my illusory energy. Uh, but, so there are many features of Krishna. Uh, see, the Prabhupada was describing the universal form. And in the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, we find the description of the universal form. That description of the universal form, Prabhupada said, that is also Krishna. He said, but that is not the lovable form of Krishna. That is the fearsome form of Krishna. Arjuna was overwhelmed seeing that form. He couldn't see it very long. He said, Somebody, please take your original form, please, please. And he took four arms, and then he took two hands, two arms. Because ultimately the two-armed form is the origin, but the four-armed form is the expansion of the origin. And that is, of course, when you see four arms, then you realize, okay, this is no longer an ordinary human appearance. Now we're dealing with a superhuman appearance. This must be God, Narayan, Narayan, Chattu Bhuj. Yes. Um, but Krishna comes with two hands. Um, but the form of Narayan is within him. Narayan is avatar and Krishna is avatari. He is the origin of the avatar. See Madhuradharani in the same way. She also expands herself. When Krishna expands himself, Radharani also expands herself. When Krishna becomes Mahavishnu, then she becomes Maharaksha. When finally Mahavishnu transforms himself from Sada Shiva, uh, then she becomes Bhagavad. Uh, and in this way, uh, the, the female concert of the Lord is, is always the concert of the Lord. And she is the origin of that. These are the pleasure pastimes of Krishna. So understanding that, um, we are becoming humble servants. So we are understanding our limitations in serving Krishna. How can, what can we offer? Um, what can we offer to Krishna? That is so special. What do we have in our possession? Anything that is so good. So we cannot take any pride in our offering, in, in what we have done for Krishna. Oh, I did all these things. 
But what can we offer? We are poor. When a poor man makes an offering, what, what can we claim? What fame can we claim? Some, somehow or other, I offered something. Yeah. Okay, I'm poor. It's not very good. But anyway, please accept it somehow or other. That is, that is the best we can offer, the best we can do. So this humility has to be there. It is not artificial. It is the truth. Who are we? How, how powerful are we? So powerful. Forty years ago, I felt very powerful. In a, in, a, in a soccer field, a football field, I was the fastest runner. No one could keep up with me. In my best season, I scored two goals a match. I was on top of the world. Yeah, I thought. Mm. Now, forget it. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Forget it. I don't even. I tell myself, I don't desire this any longer. Yeah, my desires have changed. Yeah, because I can't do it any longer. So, <laughs> so, if I could still do it, maybe the desire would come back. But no, I just can't do it. Power gone. <laughs> Once I had such a loud voice. Such a loud voice, I never used the microphone. I would sing very loud. I could sing from the noise, street noise. I wouldn't be bothered with any sound system. Now I croak. Yeah. Now I sort of, <coughs> I'm hoarse. That's it. Okay. I'm an experienced croaker. <laughs> so I can sort of still fake it. Uh, but my voice is not what it was before. Okay, now it's the voice. Now let's talk about the brain. Ah, the brain, you know. One day, a, a tall man came to me and said, can I be your disciple? I said, you are welcome. He offered his obeisances, and then he got up, kind of slowly. And I was sort of looking at him with my hands folded, and then the last 10 centimeters, he suddenly went very fast. And he gave me the headbutt of my life. <laughs> Was ominous. <laughs> After that, I was wondering what will, what, what will come from this, from, from accepting this disciple. I wasn't so sure. <laughs> it was so <sort> intense. Of <laughs> and my head was sort of reeling, and I stood there and I heard myself say, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> so sure. Anyway, somehow or other, I went to bed that night. And when I woke up the next morning, suddenly half my vision gone, left side gone, completely. Only half. And nothing there. Like as if a hand was on my arms. Like, oh, this is, so weird. This is getting, getting not so good. So I was thinking, I need some help, maybe some assistance. Uh, so there was someone who said, can you call? And then the name was gone. And then all names were gone. So I said, can you call, uh, what's his name? And, then I, and I told him, what's his name to call, what's his name? <laughs> what's your name? <laughs> and that was then, it was really something. And then, okay, I lied down and I didn't have health insurance, so I thought, I have to go to the hospital, it's going to cost me a fortune, so I didn't go. 
it. But about nine days later, I decided to go to a doctor. I said, my God, there's a blood clot in your brain. It's very serious. If you, he said, but it looks stable now. If you would have come straight away, we would have probably operated. And I'm glad I didn't know you <laughs> But anyway, I survived, and so far. <clears throat> but uh, the thing was, after that, for about six months, I was dyslexic. I don't know if you know what, what that means, but I was saying, today is a, a courtesy, and we're fasting from brains and greens. <laughs> but the funny thing was, I tried to say grains and beans, and out of my mouth came grains and beans. It was really weird, because I was saying, we're fasting from grains and beans, and out of my mouth, I heard myself say, we're fasting from grains and beans. <laughs> and at moments like that, you realize how vulnerable we actually are, how limited we actually are. Uh, and we may think, I'm the greatest. Uh, yeah, the greatest what? The greatest fool. Mirror, <laughs> uh, uh, mirror on the wall, who's the most beautiful of all? You look in the mirror, zing! Mirror <laughs> 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 <Mero> cracked. <laughs> <laughs> somehow or other, you know, yeah. somehow or other, we try and make something of it. Yeah. Somehow or other, you know, prop it up, <laughs> make it look like something. Uh, that's the situation. Uh, yes, so we realize our limitations. And we appreciate that Sri Mataradharani is the greatest devotee. And then she is assisted by Lalita Devi. Uh, Radhastami, today is the Panchami. Uh, then tomorrow will be the Shasti, the sixth day. And that will be Lalita Shasti. That will be the appearance of Sri Mataradharani, of, of Sri Lalita Devi, who is older than Sri Mataradharani. And therefore, she is superior. Oh yes, I'll tell that to her. Mm. Yes. If you want to know about Lalita, if you want to know all the things about Lalita that you never knew about Lalita, then you have to come to her. I'll tell her. I, I am telling. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't come, you will not get the full story because the uh, camera will not work all the time. <laughs> and internet in South Africa is not that good, so you might miss something. Anyway, so... And then, so Lalita is the servant of Srimata Radharani, the assistant. The assistant of Lalita Devi is Rupa Goswami in the form of Rupa Manjari. And we are known as Rupa Nugas, as those who are following the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are Rupa Nugas, following in the footsteps of Rupa Goswami. And so we are servants of the servants of the servants of the servants of the servants of Rupa Goswami. And in this way, uh, we are continuing in devotional service, always as an assistant. Uh, this is the trick. In devotional service, we have to be an assistant. We have to assist somebody. Even when we are a leader, we are assisting a greater leader. And in this way, we're still assistant. As long as we are assistant, then we are in the proper mood to approach Krishna. Uh, then we are disciple. Then we are in the mood of, uh, of assisting, assisting our spiritual master. Who is this, his spiritual master? Who is this, his spiritual master? Who is this, ultimately, Rupa 
Goswami, who is this Lalita Devi, who is this Sri Madhuradharani. And in this way, she is pleasing Krishna. Yes. She is perfect. She serves him perfectly. She has all the perfect characteristics. Oh, yes. So, I started speaking about Srimad Radharani yesterday, and I'm continuing today, and uh, tomorrow, Lalita, if you're interested, you might want to come. Uh, I don't know the exact times, but I'm sure somebody knows. Somebody on his phone has some schedule, must be. And then we are and then we are continuing. Some said four, but I four, four people. but I saw saw five on my schedule. I think if everybody comes at four, you will come And I come in at five. <laughs> and uh, This way, we are beginning our meditation. Because how can we celebrate Radhasmi in one day? How can we limit it to one day? And how can we go sufficiently deep if we are only only meditating on Shivatarari Radharani one day, get a few lectures? Max, quick, some quick examples, some quick stories. He, he, ha, ha. Oh, yeah. that was deep, that was interesting. Oh, lovely story. Oh, very deep philosophical point. Okay, yes. Uh, and I googled it also, and I got some nice things there. And on Facebook, they posted really interesting things. Lots of great but Now we can go much deeper than that. That's why I couldn't wait. I said, forget it, I'm not waiting. I started yesterday. <laughs> continue today. I want to continue tomorrow to glorify Lady today and then <coughs> as the servant of Srimati Radharani. But acting as the guru of Radharani. Mm. Oh, yes. Mm. So that's interesting. Tell you the secret. If you come, if you don't come, <laughs> then you're gonna miss out miserably, miserably miss out. <laughs> what to do? So I thank you very much for um, for for inspiring me. I want to also. Thank our hosts uh, who are maintaining this temple for allowing us to be here. Um, we're very happy to see Radha and Krishna present here today and other manifestations um, because discussion in scripture, then it comes to life in a unique way. So that's why we always ask for some questions, because it brings that, that personal interaction into the picture. So 
just one or two <laughs> questions. Rukmini is really good at asking questions. She never fails. It's amazing. When no one has a question, she has one. And they're good, usually. Mostly. <laughs> So we're looking at, for a meditation for Radhasthami. We're looking at Radharani's limitlessness and our own, her greatness, our own limitations, our own smallness. Um, so how can we really approach Srimati Radharani? <clears throat> yeah, we are all going to fall short, that's for sure. We're all going to fall short. We cannot fully understand. We cannot understand the depth of her love. We have no such experience. We thought we had love. You know, we thought, I have experienced love. Right? Uh, until we met or heard about Srimati Radharani, then we realized I never did. I never had any love, feelings of love in my life. So in front of Srimati Radharani, we, we definitely feel dwarfed um, in our being. And as we're glorifying her and we see our own insignificance, we begin to appreciate that then comes the next phase, which is looking for mercy. We approach her for mercy. Um, please be kind to me, O oh, Srimati Radharani. Kindly bestow your mercy upon me. Uh, she is very soft-hearted. Uh, it is said that when she sees anyone doing some service for Krishna, she immediately thinks this person is greater than I am. So, so therefore she genuinely feels happiness to see such service. And therefore she genuinely from the heart bestows her mercy with feeling. Uh, so, uh, so that's, that's where it will end up, uh, our meditation on Srimati Radharani. It will end up with us <coughs> praying for mercy.
but while we are dealing with them, we have to be careful. Uh, like in Yukta Vairagya, we're connecting things with Krishna. So we only do it for Krishna, not for ourselves. Uh, like I saw the number plate on the nice car that said, For you, Krishna. And my mind sort of goes, Sure. <laughs> Sorry to speak my mind in the microphone. Okay. So we have to be careful about that. And then, now, say, you take something of the material energy and you use it in the service of Krishna, now it's become transcendental. But before it was transcendental, it was a product of Ugra Karma. Ugra Karma means angry work or horrible work meant to destroy the world. Uh, Srila Prabhupada speaks about the factories and calls them the dungeons of the demons in the Bhagavatam purports, first canto. And he says the products that come from these factories are Ugra. They are destructive, they are aggressive. Ugra Karma. You know. So now we're going to take these Uber karma things and we're going to engage them in the service of Krishna. Right. So that can be done, yes, like a car that right? you can take, use. It's, a, it's an Ugra machine, it's basically an explosion motor. Right? And it's like highly, highly explosive substance called fuel causing small ex controlled explosions in the thing, which sort of makes it move. And, uh, but don't worry, there is a nice dashboard between you and that explosion engine. So you sit and a soft tape is playing with some nice bling, 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 bling. <laughs> I see, and you're driving, and it's all like sweet, you know. Uh, until some idiot gets in, on, in front of you on the road and the tires are like squeaking and screaming. Uh, and you're chanting, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's so although we engage it in the in the service of Krishna, it hasn't just lost its Ugra character. Uh, you're driving in the car, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and then some bird butts. What <laughs> <laughs> you do? Yeah, it happens, and it's like it's it's one of those things you go like, oh, yeah. So, so this is an example of how the ugra nature, the angry nature of the material energy, can still be there while the result is transcendental. We're driving for Krishna. Therefore, we're careful with the material energy. Careful. Careful. <clears throat> we are offering it to Krishna, but careful. In the past, it says that the sages chose not to use electricity. They knew about it and they chose not to use it. Isn't it? That's nicely lit up here, isn't that nice? It is, but then so many complexities to get all that energy and what did it do to the planet and what did it do to the weather and all these things. If you domino came. So, in this way, we may consider that this, maybe the sages were right to live without electricity. Maybe. I mean, not today. <laughs> One day in the future, after we are dead and gone. <laughs> Maharaj, um, Lord Chaitanya is the combined forms of Radha and Krishna. So, is there some meditation we can have on Lord Garanga also? Yeah, we can. That we had yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> now we, do, we will not do that. But. <clears throat> yes, of course. 
by going through words in Tanya, we can understand the mood of Srimati Radharani. So when one asks to me, we always approach Srimati Radharani through a Chaitanya Charitamrita, because there we get the deeper insights into the mood of Srimati Okay, uh, I'll let you go, so to speak. <laughs> they say, when people want to go, they say, I'll let you go. Uh, I guess, I think the time has come to end, so that tomorrow we have a little bit of energy left for Lali today. And, uh, and approach Shivanta Radha through her. So, I thank you very much for being with us this evening. Um, and, and the Lord is free to do it, Krishna. What more could we desire? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.